Welcome to this video. This video is a brief introduction to fracture mechanics. In this video you can find out what is fracture mechanics, when to use various fracture mechanics theories like linear elastic or elastic plastic fracture mechanics criteria. Finally, the simplest linear elastic fracture mechanics model which is Griffith criterion is explained. The processes of material manufacturing like machining and forming may introduce flaws in a finished mechanical component. So, interior and surface flaws are found in all metal parts. But, fortunately not all such flaws are unstable under service conditions. Fracture mechanics is the analysis of flaws to discover those that are safe and those that are liable to propagate as cracks. Fracture mechanics is the field of mechanics concerned with the study of the propagation of cracks in materials. As every criterion in mechanics, fracture mechanics related to two parts. In one hand, it uses methods of analytical solid mechanics to calculate the driving force on a crack, and on the other hand, it uses experimental solid mechanics to characterize the material's resistance to fracture. Then we can compare them together to analyze crack growth. Examples of some interesting practical questions that could be answered by fracture mechanics are What is the strength of the component as a function of crack size? What is the maximum permissible crack size under service loading? How long does it take for a crack to grow from the minimum detectable to the maximum permissible crack size? What is the service life of a structure with a certain crack size? How often should the structure be inspected for cracks? Answering these questions by an engineer is really amazing, do you agree? So studying fracture mechanics is a wonderful part of advanced mechanical engineering topics. Choosing the appropriate fracture mechanics criterion for your problem is the first step in analyzing it. The size of the plastic zone in comparison with the crack length is an important measure for choosing appropriate fracture mechanics criterion. When the plastic zone at the tip of the crack is small relative to the crack length, the stress state at the crack tip is the result of elastic forces within the material and is termed linear elastic fracture mechanics, or LEFM. For example, in a brittle material like glass, linear elastic fracture mechanics theory can be used. On the other hand, if the size of the plastic zone is remarkable, like in metals, elastic plastic fracture mechanics or EPFM should be used. Criteria and concepts of LEFM are Griffith's criterion, Irwin's modification, stress intensity factor, and strain energy release. These concepts will be discussed in the next videos of this playlist. In this video only Griffith's criterion is explained in continue. Criteria and concepts of EPFMR, CTOD, R-curve, J-integral, and cohesive zone model. These concepts are discussed in next videos of this playlist. Fracture mechanics was developed during World War I by English aeronautical engineer Alan Arnold Griffith. Let's investigate Griffith's model as the first criterion for LEFM. Motivations for developing Griffith's model were two contradictory facts that were observed in strength of glass. 
The first contradictory fact is amazing. The theoretical stress needed for breaking atomic bonds of glass is approximately 10,000 megapascal. But we know that glass can broke easily in real world. The stress needed to fracture bulk glass is around 100 megapascal. The real fracture stress is 100 fold smaller. Do you believe it? What is the fact behind it? The second contradictory fact was related to strength of glass fibers with various dimensions. Experiments on glass fibers that Griffith himself conducted showed that the fracture stress increases as the fiber diameter decreases. Hence the uniaxial tensile strength depends on specimen size. But uniaxial tensile strength is used extensively to predict material failure. How is it possible that it varies by specimen size? How did Griffith solve these two problems? Griffith suggested that both the low fracture strength observed in bulk glass parts and the size dependency of strength is due to the presence of microscopic flaws in the bulk material. To verify the flaw hypothesis, Griffith introduced an artificial flaw in his experimental glass specimens. The artificial flaw was in the form of a surface crack, which was much larger than other flaws in a specimen. Imagine that the size of the flaw is A, and the maximum strength of the specimen is sigma F. The results of several experiments showed that the product of the stress at fracture and the square root of the flaw length was nearly constant. Griffith developed a thermodynamic approach to explain this relation. He found that where E is the Young's modulus of the material and gamma S is the surface energy density of the material. Let's investigate in details. What is surface energy density? For this purpose, at first energy of an atomic bond is explained. Imagine two atoms of a solid. There is an equilibrium spacing distance between them. At this distance, there is no net force between them. Now imagine we pull away one of atoms from its neighbor. The x-axis represents the displacement of the atom, the y-axis shows required force. The force required to move the atom initially increases as the atoms are separated. But as the distance increases, the atoms eventually become separated so far that they no longer attract each other. By this point, the force will have leveled out, then begun to decrease before eventually returning to zero. Please note that the area under the force displacement curve represents the energy required for separating two atoms and known as the energy of an atomic bond. In the case of a crack growing in a solid, several atomic bounds are broken. Each broken bound requires a certain amount of work to overcome the atomic bond energy. The total energy required to create a crack with length A is expressed as where B is width of the specimen normal to the current plane. So, A multiplied by B shows the area of the crack. Since there are two free surfaces in both sides of the crack, areas of both of them are considered. In other words, gamma S is energy required per area of each side of the crack. It is common to use energy release rate instead of 2 gamma S. We will explain all necessary details about energy release rate in the next videos of this playlist. The Griffith equation can be written as, and the failure stress is, We know that glass panes are brittle. Let's investigate failure stress of glass with an initial given crack length of 10 millimeters. Using Griffith equation, the Young modulus of glass is 70 gigapascal and the critical energy release rate is about 7 joule per square meter. So failure stress is about 4 megapascal. This is a very low failure stress. It can be easily exceeded when bending loads are imposed on a pane of glass, which usually happens in our life. 
Thank you for watching this video. Please support our channel by a like and your comments. And don't forget to subscribe for more content.